MVP Vibe, you're watching Vibe Check live from Miami. And yes, we're at Odyssey live at the Citadel. I'm Shadia Crestful, and I'm so excited to have y'all here in my hometown of Miami. We're getting to know the artists that encompass the city, that embody the city. And I'm so excited to introduce to y'all. Cash is on the show. Welcome to Vibe Check. I'm doing amazing. It's a beautiful day in South Florida. For sure. And we get to talk to you and get to know you. Listen, I'm on vibe check. It's, I mean, <laughs> it's already a vibe. It's already a vibe. You I love it. Yeah. I love it. So, Cash, you got to let us know where in South Florida are you from? Okay, well, let's just start from the beginning. Yeah, you know, tell us from the beginning. Okay, so I was born in Cali. You were born in Cali. I was born in Santa Barbara. Okay. I was raised here. A uh, nice. So I was raised in Liberty City. Okay. Right next to uh, Charles Haley Park. Yeah. And then um, I kind of moved around a lot. So from the city to down south, I'm pretty much, I've been outside. Yeah. I feel like in Miami, like you get a, you live in an apartment for two years and then you got to keep it moving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, like when I was growing up, I didn't know anything about, I didn't even know Miami had a down south. So all I knew was North Miami. Yeah. City. So when I Well, I'm sure growing up in Liberty City, must have been, what was that like? What, like, um, give us your perspective. At, around that time, it was, it was carefree. You know, we was running all over the place. I mm -hmm. was a kid. I was running around with cousins and siblings and stuff like that. And we was in the parks. We was playing sports. We was just, it was carefree at the time. For so, sure. You know, so it was a good time at that time. So a carefree cash running around <laughs> South Florida. Yeah. When did you fall in love with music and decide um, that... You know, this was it for you. Uh, well, my father introduced me to hip hop. And, well, he introduced awesome. me to like all genres of music. Like, okay, on, right? what so, do you remember him playing in the car? He wasn't even in the car. Or like, playing for you? Like, he had like record collection. Still got this collection. Wow. Every day. Okay. So we talking about around this time, like he was playing LL Cool J, my radio album. And okay. Eric Ben Rakim, he's playing Two Lock Crew, he's playing Shot Day, Kenny G. This is what's playing in my house. Mm -hmm. So I was introduced to music at a very young age. So I just fell in love with music, not knowing that this is what I was going to become. Okay. But you just knew that it was something that you loved to listen to. For sure. Like everything. Michael Jackson was playing in the crib. I was dancing. Yeah. So that's where it started. So that's where the love for music came from. And then it usually, then it just gradually got to where. I was eight or nine, and I started writing music for therapy purposes, right? Okay. So, um... Were you was, writing music for yourself? Yeah. I okay. Was just, I was just writing it for me. All right. I, I was eight or nine. You know, I didn't know anything about song structure. I was just writing whatever... Wow. Whatever what was coming out at the time. What inspired that at eight, nine-year-old self to start writing and doing it as therapy? Like, what inspires that? Um, okay, so when my parents got divorced, mm -hmm. that really... I was young, probably like six or seven. So it kind of, kind of. Sure, that hurts. Had a rough thing on me, right? So parents got divorced. I'm going through a lot with that. And I think um, for me was, you know, my mom tried taking me to therapy, but that didn't work. Mm. So I was like, you know, let me just write. Mm -hmm. I don't know what triggered it. I don't know what it was, but I just started writing, writing. And once I started writing, I couldn't stop writing. And mm -hmm. on top of that, I had a speech impediment. So um, if you hear me talking slow and real smooth like, it's because that's how I learned not to stutter. Okay. <laughs> right? So I had a speech impediment growing up, and writing was my therapy. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to speak, so I just wrote it. And it went from that to uh, freestyling at school, rapping at school, and stuff like that. And people would hear me rap like, yo, you pretty good. And it yeah. went from, yo, you pretty good to, yo, you might want to pursue that. You know what I'm saying? But at the time, I played sports. So sports was my number one thing, right? So I played basketball, I played football, I played baseball. I was always a sports fanatic. But I think music just had a hold on me, something I just couldn't shake. So mm -hmm. music became the thing. So from sports, um, and you said that you were good at it, but you were like, music became your thing. Um, and you also described how it influenced you throughout your life. Um, at what point, though, and how old were you when you were like, this is my thing? Um, I think I was like 18 and 19. 18? 18, 19, and um, I think I had heard enough of, I think you should do it. I think yeah, yeah, you and, need to go for this. And I had got into some trouble. So I ended up getting arrested 
when I was in another state. Mm -hmm. And I was in a uh, detention center for like 30 days. Okay. So they showed us this this uh, motivational speaker, right? And I don't know, a light bulb went off. It went off. I saw it, and a light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. And I made a decision. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. Yeah. And when I got out, I was in Virginia. So that's where my journey started. It started in Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. That's where it started, and I've been outside ever since. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you for sharing uh, that. Thank you, no problem. Yeah, that's amazing because now um, we it translates to your music today. Right. I'm sure you're still writing. Right. Um, let's talk about songwriting because you've been doing it since you were eight. <laughs> <laughs> for a long time. Um, when you see uh, a song on the Drake album right. and you see that it's written by like 14 different people, right. you know, <laughs> how... Um, easy are you when it's like someone wants to get their hands on your song and it's not one person it's probably 12 well, and they're um, like hey we want to write and join in on this song too like you need to do this like how what what is that like as an artist because you're like wait you're taking away my song uh, <laughs> it's a process it's a process right so you go from this space where it's just you and your room or wherever you write your music at to a space where when you start to get into the business, it's more creative opinions, mm -hmm. way, right? So when I go record, it's usually me and my guys. It's my team, and we're in there, and we're bouncing ideas. They may not write the song, but, but they're giving what they hear with their ear. Okay. Right? So, per se, Manny may be in the room. He said, yo, I think you should say it like this. I think you should take this word and flop it with this word. And he may not be writing a record for me, but I need that opinion. Yeah. I need three other, four other guys to be in the room to be like, hey, um, this this right here sound good, but this right here kind of sound off. So I, you might want to change that. Yeah. So it's just it's a collaborative effort. A collaborative um, effort. It's I a love collaborative that. Collaborative effort. I think to. to I make, think it's difficult for artists to understand that it is. <laughs> yeah, like it's not a one man show. Mm -hmm. To get to the finals and win a chip, you need a team of players. You need a team of you players. Team of players. So you have to be a team player. And you um, mentioned Manny, and for everyone that's watching, shouts out to Manny. Shouts out to my guy, Because Manny. he is definitely someone that anyone needs to know out here in South Florida that's to connect fact. yourself Manny in music. Is the, Manny is the motor mouth of the city. If you don't for know him, sure. he's the president of my company, Black Mogul. He's my big brother. So we work very, very well together, and he be getting on my ass. Excuse me. <laughs> you know and, you know, you need that um, sometimes with people on your team because right. that means that, you know, they actually care about what you're doing. Right, and that's right. what you want. So, um, what would you say to people that are up and coming, trying to find that team? How do you build it? What do you do? Um, it took me some years to get here. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, we literally, I literally just put this team together probably almost two years ago. And um, I never really had a team. It was just me. I, I was the team. I yeah. was the guy wearing all the hats. So um, I think when I got to a certain point um, in my first deal, I was like, man, I need a team of guys. Like, I can't, I can't do it all by myself. I can't do it. For and sure. I think that was the breaking point, right? It's like, okay, I, I need some, I need some backup. You know what I'm saying? So when I got my guys, and these are guys I've been knowing for years. I've been knowing Manny since like 2015, 2016, and my other guys since 2008. Mm -hmm. One guy I went to, I went to college with. So it's like, I got these guys I've been knowing for years, and they really know me, and they really believe in the vision. They see the vision. And they really to go all out just like I am and die for it. So um, it just takes a while to get there. For just, sure. Just like anything else, it's a process. Got to keep working. Now, you, you said something right now when you were signed. Now, you were signed before. Yes, I was signed. And someone did see your vision, and it was right. Kevin Little, right? Right, right, right. Hey. So you were signed with Kevin Little. Tell us about that. Shouts out to Kevin Little. Um, and shouts out to a friend that was working with Kevin. He was actually Kevin Little's DJ at the time. Okay. And, um... He gave me a call one day and he was like, yo, I might have a situation for you. Just send some music over. I said, all right. Sent like five records. He was like, okay, look, you know who Kevin Little is? I said, I know who Kevin Little yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> a legend. So he was like, uh, I played your music for him. They want to meet you. And it went to the meeting and it went to, we want to sign you. So the deal was with Kevin and uh, with Kevin Little and Sony Records. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin Little's uh, independent label, Terracon Records, was under Sony. Under Sony. Time. So, so that was the deal, and it was a, a great situation uh, for a first situation. Um, it wasn't, at that time, um, I didn't really care about, you know, everybody makes a big deal about the advance. Yeah. I didn't want an advance. I just wanted a fair deal and an opportunity. Okay. So that's what I got. I was able to tour all over the world and go overseas. And what was that like? 
It was. What was your favorite city? New York by far. Okay. In the states. Well, New York and Cali by far. Okay. Um, New York, I performed at Radio City Music Hall. That's incredible. Sold out show, 16,000 people. Wow. That was my first time performing in New York. Um, first time performing in New, York, in New York, and it's Radio City Music Hall, and yes. it's sold out. I was shit and brick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, when I tell you, <laughs> bubble guts is the only thing, <laughs> but we pulled it out. You did it. I did a good job. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, um, I mean, if that's not showing you that you're going the right path, right, like. Right. Hey, listen, <laughs> it, it was amazing. Like, you know, this is, these are things I dreamed about coming up in my career. And I was like, man, I finally made it to this point. Yeah. Doing these type of things. And then in 2019, we went, um, had my first BET Awards appearance. We walked the carpet for the first time. Mm -hmm. We had some shows out there. And we toured overseas in London. So I had a UK tour. And that was amazing. We talking about 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 people at certain shows. So these were moments I never forget. What is it like connecting with fans from everywhere? They were really embracing. You know yeah. I'm like they embraced, they were like, oh man, you from da 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 da. I'm like, yeah. And they were like, yo, we love you. I was like, yo, it was, it was, it was All a culture shock for me. It was, I was like, yo, like we here. Yeah. Like we here, like we done made it, we outside. And these people know who I am. They play me on the radio while I be walking around the city. Um, and it was amazing, man. It was a amazing experience, and I'll never forget it. And it was a level that I got to, and I was just trying to get to the next level after that. So what is the next level for you? Um, the next level is now that um, I'm a company owner and I run my own company, Black, yeah. Black Mogul Enterprises. What is Black Mogul? So Black Mogul Enterprises is the, the umbrella over everything else that we do. But okay. it's entertainment, mm -hmm. it's clothing, it's branding. It's, it's, it's accessories, it's, it's everything. But what we wanted to do for the culture was, um, when I was coming up, you know, there was Rockwell, there was No Limit, there was mm -hmm. uh, Sean John, there was all, all of these things. And I feel like now we, got, we have got to a point to where we kind of gave the ownership away. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do something for the culture that we can wear and that we can be proud of wearing. It's not about me, but it's about when you put it on, you feel like you can go outside and you can go close a million dollar deal today. Yeah. So that's what we wanted to do for the culture. We wanted to uh, preach ownership and owning your dreams and your vision and just really take control of it and um, and just run with it. And um, so that's what we out here doing. So next that. level, you're growing your business, Black Mogul Entertainment. That's what it is, right? Black Mogul Enterprises. 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 Facts. And um, are you working on anything with music right now? Are you working yeah, on an album? For sure. We're working on an EP project right now. Awesome. We're done. We got a new record coming soon. And um, matter of fact, I think you might play it today. Yes. But, um, we do got a new record that's coming out soon. Manny, I don't know the date that we decided yet, but I'm pretty sure he's going to check off the date for us. <laughs> and we got that coming for the street soon. We really, we've been in the lab working, staying quiet, working behind the scenes. And what do you do to stay inspired? I keep my eyes on the guys who I think are great. Okay. I really, I really have a passion and ambition for being great. Um, so I'm looking at the hoes. I'm looking at the Drakes. I'm looking at the Kanye's. I'm looking at these guys, and do these are these the guys that inspire you? For sure. Yeah. For sure. So I'm, 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 I'm nitpicking. I'm a, I'm a student at heart. Yeah. So I'm a sponge. I soak up everything. I watch everything. I listen. And I just take notes. Do you hear, do you agree with a lot of the stuff that Kanye talks about? Um, no, I don't agree with everything. <laughs> I don't agree with everything, but he's entitled to his opinion. For sure. And his perspective. For right? sure. Um, I think we live in a, in an era where, oh, you don't agree with me. Da, 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 da. Well, you said it um, earlier perfectly, creative opinions. Creative opinions, <laughs> right. We all can have our opinion and we can agree to disagree. For sure. Okay. Um, because I touched up on Kanye and, and, you know, you have Black Mogul Entertainment that you guys do your own, um, you know, kind of styling and um, you do you make your own clothes. Right. If there was a brand out there that was like, hey, Cash, we're going to go ahead and sponsor you. What brand would you align with? Puma. With Puma immediately. Yeah. Awesome. You would yeah. make some Puma shoes, a collection. A Puma collaboration is what I want. All right. So you heard them. Puma got to sponsor Cash. Right now. Hey, we need to date. 
now. We need some <laughs> Miami Puma edition right. cash shoes. <laughs> For sure, we need that on the streets. For sure. I love that. Cash, thank you so much for thank coming you. through. It was great getting to know you. You got to please tell us what you have coming up for the rest of the year that we can get excited about. I know you, you're you working on the album. So we're working on a new project. We got a new record coming. Um, we got a new summer collection with the brand coming. And we got some other things that we're working on that we ain't going to speak on just yet. But we're working on it. And we're really going to expand the brand and we're really going to uplift the culture and shift the culture in a way that's have you know, it haven't been shifted yet. Make it happen. I love it. Cash on Vibe Check. Thank y'all for watching. Download the app MVP Vibe. Na, 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 na. Uh, they predicted me to fail. Dead by 21 or they buried me in a cell. Product from where I dwell by product of crack sales. Young black males, they wanna see us derail. Still, I overcame the odds and showed them how to prevail. Uh, with all these million dollars.